Hi guys, today we're going to talk about paleomagnetism and the ocean floor, and we're going to look a little bit at um, how the ocean floor actually spreads. Uh, so let's kind of dive in here. It says here, uh, when Wegener proposed his hypothesis of continental drift, little was known about the ocean floor. He thought that the continents plowed through the ocean floor like ice-breaking ships plowing through ice. I mean, it kind of sounds ridiculous now when you think about it, but uh, think back to Wegener, and, and he really didn't have any really good idea how the plates moved, like, like what was causing them to move. He knew they had moved, and the best he could really come up with was, hey, they must be just kind of plowing along through the ocean floor um, like little ships. Little did he know that the continents are actually attached to plates, some of which include ocean floor, and the entire plate is moving about because of the convection currents um, deep within the Earth. So, uh, later studies of the oceans provided one of the keys to the plate tectonic theory. In this lab, you will observe how the magnetic rocks on the ocean floor can be used to understand plate tectonics. So the problem we're looking at here is how are the paleomagnetic patterns on the ocean floor used to determine the rate of seafloor spreading? And if you remember from the lectures that we've had, um, essentially how we discovered this was dragging magnetometers behind ships um, across the mid-oceanic mid ridges um, going one direction we saw an exact replicated pattern of stripes going from like normal polarity to reverse polarity to normal polarity going the other direction from the mid-atlantic ridge we saw exactly the same uh, repeating pattern so uh, as we go here you're going to need a ruler and a calculator to pull this off you can use the calculator on your phone if you need to but you'll need a metric ruler as well, or at least something to kind of measure with a little bit, even if you use the corner of a piece of paper. Um, so let's start here with the procedure. Uh, scientists have reconstructed Earth's magnetic polarity reversals over the past several million years. A record of these reversals is shown up here in this figure number one. Periods of normal polarity, polarity when a compass would have pointed north like it does today are shown in grayscale. Periods of reverse polarity are shown in white. Record the number of times Earth's magnetic field has reversed polarity in the last four million years. So um, this is uh, from present here all the way down through the last four million years. We want to know how many times it's reversed polarity. Reverse, reverse polarity on this diagram is shown in white. Okay, that just means the compass would have pointed the other direction. So. Um, these here, you have to understand, they've got kind of funny little markings in them. These are actually shaded too. So I'll just shade those in for you there, okay? So we're counting reverse polarity, those are white. So there's one time, two times, three times, uh, four times, a little guy right in there, and then five times we reverse polarity. So we've reversed polarity five times I'll write that down here for you. In the last four million years. Um, notice also while you're looking at this, the fact that the time, the length of time that polarity was reversed or polarity was regular, uh, they're not equal, are they? So uh, it doesn't mean that, I mean, just because for say, you know, like 0.8 of a million years or so were we're at regular polarity, doesn't mean that we'll have 0.8 of a million years of reverse polarity. So that might only be a very short segment, okay? Or just because we had a very short segment of normal polarity, doesn't mean that we won't have, that we'll have actually a long segment um, or a short segment correspondingly of reverse polarity. So they, they don't match up, but they do kind of repeat, don't they? They, they? they alternate, but they don't match up as far as how long each period happens to be. Okay, the three diagrams in figure two on the next page illustrate magnetic polarity reversals across sections of the mid-oceanic ridges in the Pacific, South Atlantic, and North Atlantic oceans. So wherever there's one of these ridges and ocean floors being formed, new floors being formed and spreading, uh, we'll see these polarity reversals. Um, so we've got three different ocean basins. Periods of normal polarity are shown in the same gray scale uh, in the illustration above, observe the patterns of polarity in the rock. Um, observe th that the patterns of polarity in the rock match on either side of the ridge for each ocean basin. 
So let's just take a gander at that here. So uh, notice this is Pacific Ocean, South Atlantic and North Atlantic. It doesn't matter, first of all, which ocean basin we're in, we're going to see exactly the same polarity um, reversals for the same distances of time um, in, in each, of, each of these sections, okay? So let's take a look here. Here's the ridge, the mid-ocean ridge. So going outwards from here, we're going to have these stripes of polarity that are, are exactly mirroring each other. So if we have normal polarity here, new rocks forming in the middle and spreading outwards, it would, it would form exactly the same normal polarity rock over here, right? Going back in time, this rock is older, right? This is younger rock. Um, we've got exactly the same. We've got a reverse polarity situation, reverse polarity. Then we go back to normal again on either side, okay? Then we go to reverse again. Then we go to normal. Then we go to reverse again. We're gonna see the same exact patterns down below here in these other oceans, okay? Now, the reason they're different lengths is because the spreading is not occurring at the same rate. So we'll get to that. Let's see what we're supposed to do here. Okay. Um, on the three ocean floor diagrams, identify and mark the periods of normal polarity with the letters A through F, begin at the rift valley, and label along both sides of each ridge. Hint, the left side of the South Atlantic has already been done and can act as a guide. Okay. Let's take a look at these here. So this is the part that's already been done for us to show us which parts we're labeling. So we're gonna label those same exact things in the other two ocean basins and on the other side here. So let's start with the other side of the South Atlantic. So if this is A here, well then this is A as well. Okay, this is B. This is B. All we're doing is matching them up exactly how I, I was explaining just a minute ago. C is here, okay? D is over here, and then we've got E, and then F. And we're only labeling the normal polarities, okay? We didn't label the reversed, which are the, the white ones. And then we're gonna do the same thing up here. Once again, we've got A, B, and C. Oh, where's D, E, and F? Well, they're here, or maybe they're pushed underneath some other crust somewhere, but they're out here someplace, okay? A, B, and C, okay? Now down here in the North Atlantic, we're gonna start again from the middle. A, B, C, D, E, and F. We've got them all there, don't we? A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, they exactly mirror each other. The reason we don't have as many up here is because they're further out. They don't fit, either don't fit on the paper or they've already been subducted underneath some other crust someplace, so they're gone. Okay, let's go back to our instructions here. <clears throat> so we did this. Using the South Atlantic as an example, label the beginning of normal polarity, period C, two million years ago on the left sides of the Pacific and North Atlantic. Okay. <clears throat> so what we're saying is it took, this rock here is two million years old. We can tell that with radiometric dating. So all this rock that's been formed from here to here has taken two million years. Let's look at the same rock up here. So from this sequence right here, from this guy here, all the way back to here, of course, is two million years. Okay, that same span of time. Let's find that same rock unit over here. It's right here. So from here, going all the way back to there, I'll just draw it in like this for you. So we're saying from there to there, is two million years. Okay, just like from here to here is two million years, and from here to there is two million years. Cool. Okay. Uh, we've done all this. Good. And now we're <laughs> a million interruptions here. 
Uh, now we're going to this next step here. Using the distance scale shown right here, um, determine which ocean basin has spread the greatest distance during the last two million years. Measure from the center of the Rift Valley. So we want to know which one spread the most. Well, this should be pretty obvious. We really don't even need to probably measure it. This is my centimeters here. Looking at this one right here, I am about at 3.1 centimeters. Okay. This guy here is about 3.123 centimeters. So that one spread a little bit further. Okay. But look at this one right here. We're almost at seven centimeters here. So this one has, of course, spread the most, and this is the Pacific Ocean. Okay, so in the last two million years, the Pacific Ocean has spread the most. We don't even need to measure because you can just see, look at, look at how much more rock has formed here in the same two million years. So first takeaway from this, and we're gonna ask you this again here in a second, is the fact that not all ocean basins, not all mid-Atlantic ridge systems spread at the same rate. Look at how much faster rocks being formed here compared to here. So let's say there's a continent attached over here and somewhere over here is a continent, okay? Maybe North America, maybe Africa, something like that. Um, the speed at which these two continents appear to be moving across the surface of the earth away from each other is going to be a lot faster or at least some faster than if there were two continents over here moving apart. They wouldn't be moving as fast, okay? All right, refer to the distance scale. Notice that the left side of the South Atlantic Basin, South Atlantic Basin over here, has spread approximately 39 kilometers from the center of the Rift Valley in two million years. Okay, so yeah, from here to here, 39 kilometers. How do we know that? Well. The distance from here to here compared to our scale here is almost exactly, it's almost exactly 40. So we're going to be kind of making these measurements here in a second. How many kilometers has the left side of the Pacific Basin spread in 2 million years? So let's go to the Pacific um, Basin. Here's the Pacific Ocean right here. And we want to know how far this thing is spread. In order to pull that off, we have to make a measurement. Now you could just take a piece of paper and make a measurement here and then hold it up to the key if you want. I'm going to use the ruler because it's just easier. So going from right there out to there, about right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw right on my ruler there. Make it easier for me. Okay, now I need to go down here and I need to kind of make a measurement here. So there's, there's 40, because that's 40 kilometers. So from there to there, I've got another 40, like almost exactly. So how far have we gone? Well, 40 plus 40 is 80 kilometers per I'm gonna write this in, two million years, so you don't get confused and think it's one million years. Because they wanted to know for two million years how fast, how far this side has spread. So, 80 kilometers, two million years. Now remember, both sides are spreading. So technically speaking, um, this thing's gone 160 kilometers in two million years. Like if we were measuring the distance of, of two continents out here, that you gotta double that, because both sides are moving that fast, right? Okay, let's move on to the next page. We're gonna keep looking back at this. How many kilometers has the left side of the North Atlantic Ocean spread in two million years? We've gotta do the same thing, okay. Uh, let's see here, the North Atlantic Ocean. And we can even, I'll show you if I did this with a piece of paper here. We wanna know the distance from here to here. So all I do down here is I put it right here. And so since that's 40, we kind of have to make a little bit of a guess here, don't we? So I'm gonna say 37, okay? It is pretty darn close to 40, isn't it? So let's say 
137 kilometers, and again, this is per two million years. Okay. Now, how many kilometers has each ocean, ocean basin opened in the past two million years? So here's where you're going to have to use that knowledge that I just gave you a moment ago, right? The total opening of the basin, both sides are moving, so you need to double this number. Whatever we got for one side, we need to double for the other. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we'll write, we'll write the three basins here. We've got the Pacific. And when we doubled that number, that was 80, right? 160 kilometers per 2 million years. Then we also had the uh, South Atlantic. And that one, if we double what we got for the South Atlantic, which we haven't, actually they measured for us, they measured it um, at 39 kilometers, so we just need to double that. Take your old calculator, 39 times two, 78. Okay, and the last one is the North Atlantic. And the North Atlantic, um, we decided right here, 37. So once again, 37 times two, gotta double it, 74 kilometers per two million years. Okay. Next up, if both the distance that each ocean basin has opened and the time it took to open that distance are known, the rate of seafloor spreading can be calculated. So let me say that again. We know the, the, the distance that, that it's opened. Here's the distance it's opened. In the time it took to open, two million years, um, the rate of, of seafloor spreading can be calculated. Determine the rate of seafloor spreading for the South Atlantic Ocean Basin. That's this guy, oops, it's this guy right here in centimeters per year. Hint, to determine the rate of spreading in centimeters per year for each ocean basin, first convert the distance from kilometers to centimeters. So we want this in centimeters per year, okay. Uh, then divide this distance by the time, two million years. Okay, so what we're gonna learn here, we're gonna use something called dimensional analysis or factor labeling method, which is a technique you use in chemistry and is actually really, really useful for something like this. It's useful for a lot of stuff, actually. Um, so what we're going to do, um, just like you would in chemistry, is we're going to start with our given. And here, our given happens to be 78 kilometers per 2 million years. And these, this is the number in the units we want to convert. And when we're done, we want centimeters per year. Right now we're in kilometers per million years. So we need to do some serious converting here. So let's go ahead and write that number down. We're in 78 kilometers per two million years. There we go. And I'm going to put times in a line. If you've had chemistry or physics, you're probably familiar with this. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this kilometers thing um, into centimeters. So to convert kilometers into centimeters, I need to know um, either how many kilometers there are, or how many centimeters there are in a kilometer, or I can take it in steps. I could convert, say, kilometers into meters first. So let's just do that. Okay, one kilometer. Now, in factor labeling and dimensional analysis, the units you want to cancel need to be across from each other opposite. So I can cancel that and cancel it here, and I'm going to be left with the new units up top here, which is the fact that there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. 
Now I'm gonna put times in a line again. Hope I left myself enough room here. Now I need, I got rid of kilometers, kilometers, I'm in meters. To get out of meters, I'm gonna have to put meters down here. So I know that one meter happens to be a uh, hundred centimeters. Now meters is gonna cancel and I'll be left with just centimeters. Now, I've, I've fixed the top units, they're in centimeters, now I need to fix the bottom units, which are in million years. So to get from million years to years, I could start converting um, slowly again like that, but let's do this a little quicker here. I'm gonna just go from, now I want this to end up on the bottom, so what I need to have up here across from it up top is I need to get rid of million years. So I'm gonna put one million years per, this is how many years there are in a million. So that is, that is a million right there, okay? So my units here are in whole million years, get it? and I've written completely out what a million years is here. I could have just doubled this number and put it down here as, as two million years to start with. That would have been an easy way to do it as well. But I wanted you guys to see kind of how this whole thing plays out with two different units you're trying to convert. So now I just need to do my math. So how do I do this? There's two ways to go about it. What you can do is you can multiply all the way across, write it down, multiply all the way across the bottom, write it down, and then divide. Or you could work it through like I do, which is, I think, quicker, because I don't have to write anything else down. I'm gonna take 78, and I'm gonna divide by two equals. Now I'm gonna multiply by 1,000, okay? I would divide by one, well, that doesn't do anything. So let's now just continue to multiply by 100, okay? equals. Dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. Multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything. Now I need to divide by a million here. Divided by 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, get the zeros right. Hit equals, and I get, lo and behold, 3.9. Now what's my units? Centimeters per year is my answer. That's for the South Atlantic. Okay, that's exactly how you would do that for the South Atlantic. 3.9 centimeters per year. So uh, it's not very fast. It, it's it's uh, moving roughly at about the rate your fingernails grow. So if you're like, how, much, how long can my fingernails grow in a year? Um, it's somewhere around about four centimeters, apparently. Uh, I don't think you'd want to actually let your fingernails grow out four centimeters, but four centimeters is from here to here. So this, this you know, you're not going to notice it <laughs> over the course of the earth in one year. Um, you'd notice it on your fingernails for sure, right? It's not super fast. Okay, let's move on to the next part here. Determine the rate of seafloor spreading for the North Atlantic and Pacific Ocean basins. Okay, so we're going to work this same thing out. North Atlantic, and Pacific. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let you guys figure this out. All you're going to do is use this exact equation right here. You're gonna multiply it just like I did, okay? Um, the only number you're going to change is this first number here, because all of our units are started in two million years. So you'll need to change this. So for the North Atlantic, you're gonna to need to plug in 74 there. So plug in 74 here. When you do the Pacific, you're going to need to plug in 160 here. Okay, so work those two out. Get an answer, I'm gonna ask you about it on the quiz, so make sure you do that. Uh, let's answer these last two questions here. Um, it's pretty obvious, actually. Um, I'm gonna let you kind of think about these a little bit here. Which ocean basin is spreading the fastest? 
uh, this versus the slowest? Well, the two ways you could figure that out, you can either look at these three numbers right here, which is the speed they're spreading per year in centimeters, or you could just simply look right up here. We've already got how fast they're opening per two million years. So you've got, you know, how fast are these things moving and how slow are they moving? You can easily answer that question right there. And then secondly here, do ocean basins spread uniformly over the entire basin? Okay. Um, so uh, let's let's kind of talk that talk about that there for a second. So um, the so let, let's let's think about that really in terms of do all these move at the same rate? And it's pretty obvious that no. They, they don't move at the same rate. But we could also talk about it in terms of an individual ocean basin. And they don't really say that in here, but um, I'll just tell you here that no, so two takeaways here. One is obviously all the ocean basins aren't moving the same rate. There's some different speeds, right? But secondly, if we look at an individual ocean basin, for instance, like, uh, say the North Atlantic, okay, looking at a section of ridge just right here and comparing it like further down the ridge someplace in the same exact ocean, uh, you'll notice they don't all actually move. Different parts of the ridge can move a little bit faster or a little bit slower. Okay, there's slightly, not, not a whole lot different, but a little bit different. Um, and that, of course, causes a lot of these little faults here, these transform faults that you can't see in the picture. Okay, so I think we've answered everything. Make sure you do these questions here. Should be pretty obvious at this point how to do that. Then you can go online and take your quiz. Let me zoom out here. I'll give you the whole uh, thing that we just did. There we go. Okay, and the other one that we did that we worked on was here. And lastly, the first page that we worked on was this one right here. Okay, guys, that's it. Go ahead and take your quiz.